Hello and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukule Tutele. Well, tonight we explore what investors are looking for when it comes to property deals as investment opportunities. Joining us from our Cape Town studio is Gary Palmer, who's uh, the chief executive of Paragon Lending Solutions. Good to have you with us today, uh, Gary, and thanks for making time. Maybe let's begin this conversation by taking a look at the uh, landscape as it currently stands with regard to uh, property investment opportunities against the macroeconomic conditions that we all face here in South Africa. Yeah, I think, uh, firstly, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, interesting times. I mean, we've uh, been through quite a lot since 2008, and I think the time we're actually uh, experiencing now is, uh, I suppose, more political uncertainty, which is causing a lot of property uh, investors to sit on their hands and really do nothing and see what uh, happens politically. Um, but there are always opportunities. You know, what we've seen over the last few years is certain pockets of excellence in the property market. Um, student accommodation was a big one at some point in time. Uh, then it went to retirement. Now what we've seen is <coughs> really two areas that are doing uh, nicely is uh, residential. You know, we've seen a lot of people not move away from sort of office and commercial uh, into the residential space, but uh, a lot of players are focusing on residential at the moment given the yields. And uh, you know, if you speak to a lot of the lenders and the bankers, quite an interesting trend now uh, where people are looking at industrial again, which hasn't happened for a long period of time. I've just got off the phone now from one of the banks and they said that a lot of their deals now is industrial um, and it's mainly as a result of online shopping. So the, the, the people that do the distribution of, you know, are, are now investing in property in the industrial space. So, you know, a good time to be in property. Mm. Uh, on that particular note though, Gary, as we know, uh, uh, there might be a lot more risks associated with investing in tangible property assets. Uh, is this still a theme that's quite popular in the South African market versus investing in uh, listed property and REITs perhaps as an alternative? Yeah, it depends on, I suppose, who the investor is, you know, for, you know, the, just, so the average consumer in the market, um, they would like to, uh, they do invest uh, you know, in the listed space, but predominantly in, in the hard assets. But with that comes certain risks as well, mainly, uh, um, I would say, liquidity risk. <laughs> so when you're looking at property, you have to analyze certain risks. Uh, one is, that's an income risk, um, and you have to have a look at the underlying tenants, which varies between residential and commercial. Um, then you've got your operational risks, and what we saw probably about two years ago, two, three years ago, a lot of the, the operational costs increased. Um, so electricity and municipal rates, so that really affected a lot of people. And then now given the, I'll say, illiquid nature of, of prop, uh, property, um, you have to look at the exit risk, you know, God forbid if something happens and you need to exit the property, mm. you know, how quickly, you know, can you exit? So if you, as you pointed out, some people in, invested in REITs and, you know, if they're listed, relatively easy to exit those transactions. But when you're holding uh, hard assets, uh, it's quite difficult to exit the deals when you want to exit. You know, the problem with property is not exiting, it's just exiting at a time where you're not ready. So you might be under other pressure. The banks might be forcing you to exit a deal. That's the worst time. So whatever profits you think you've made in property really go out the window when you're forced to sell an asset when you're not ready to sell. So true. Uh, let's head back to the bricks and mortar story that uh, we've both alluded to and perhaps uh, looking at the investment opportunities there. So we're speaking to the audience here who uh, has a residential property and looking uh, at additional structures uh, as opportunities for investment here. Is it a buyer's market though? Uh, because I'd be thinking, Gary, that to purchase the property, you'd need capital. And capital right now in the South African sphere doesn't come very cheaply. It doesn't. And the prices have changed. I mean, when I was on your show, call it a year, two years ago, you know, you're borrowing money from a bank to buy a residential property. The rates then were, call it at prime minus two. I think you're lucky, you know, to, to borrow money at prime on residential. So certainly, you know, not only is the access to the capital become increasingly difficult, uh, but when you do manage to get access to the capital, it's a lot more expensive. So. You know, if, uh, you know, if your viewers are looking to purchase property, residential or other, you know, I would think that you would need a greater deposit to what you needed in the past. And you also have to factor into account that it's going to cost you a lot more. So that's, I think, why we've seen a huge shift from people wanting to own their own properties to renting. You know, that's why so many big investors have gone into the rental space, because it actually is a lot more expensive to own your own property than it is to rent. So that's why the banks now are becoming more amenable to lending to investors to put up blocks of flats for rental. Um, you know, maybe two years ago they weren't so keen to do it, but now certainly the banks are focused on that area. And you're getting great, uh, great returns uh, owning sort of uh, residential 
property which is uh, let out. So there has been a, a shift in what uh, you know investors are looking at. Mm. It brings up again the old age question whether buy versus rent and that can go on for days Gary. But coming back to the risks that you were alluded to, uh, if investors do take a, perhaps take a look at the opportunity of uh, developing properties and gaining access to finance for that, that also comes with its own bit of risk as we know where some consumers might find yes. themselves under pressure to actually pay off their rent in future. Yeah, so, so if you are looking for funding to, to develop, you know, it's not so easy to get funding from the banks, certainly in this market. So what we've seen is, uh, is a few, I mean, a few, maybe a few pointers is that there is a massive market out there, which people, I think, underestimate in terms of the, the number of lenders in the market. Um, there are a lot of, besides the, I'd say the big four banks, you've got the smaller banks who we're seeing are very active at the moment, and you've got a lot of um, non-bank lenders and if I can even divide that up um, in the market you've got a lot of the asset managers and in investment managers and even private funds you know I had a client looking for quite a sizable amount uh, but in a very short period of time you know a, a week they needed to raise quite a lot of money you know I didn't even attempt to assist that client by going to a bank I went to a private fund you know that ultimately gets funds from a, a big instit institutional funds and we were successful so what viewers uh, should note is that there are a lot of lenders out in the market. You know, just because one is not successful with your primary bank, um, and even if you try another bank, don't be disheartened. There really are a lot of lenders out in the market and that can look at different opportunities, whether that's for property or for your business or whether it's for in-property development or investment. You know, the, the market is bigger than what people think. Mm. If that's where the opportunity lies then, Gary, what are the key considerations to bear in mind uh, when going into those conversations uh, uh, and, and making sure that you walk out with a competitive deal? Uh, I think the key consideration is firstly, take time into account you know um, <coughs> often you uh, a person needs to move very quickly on a transaction you've definitely seen with the banks that the turnaround times have definitely slowed uh, because there's a lot more compliance and governance that the banks have to follow um, so I would factor in you know it's very difficult to do a deal in a rush anymore um, also if you're dealing with I'd say the smaller banks or even non-bank lenders it is worth going out into the market and getting a few sort of comparable quotes because you know <coughs> we've seen you know certain appetites differ between different funders so you know you, you'll focus your energies on one particular funder you know but there are other funders out there that might offer sort of competitive rates as well so you know you you got to allow the, the lead times are a little bit longer so my, my advice is if there are opportunities in the market you do need to move quickly then try and get your funding in place before try and make sure that you've got the equity uh, available if you don't have it <coughs> then you must uh, you know find a partner who can maybe assist you um, and then just put your feelers out into the market and firstly identify who the other lenders are uh, in the market and start developing those those relationships mm -hmm. to come back though to the individual who might be doing things on a much smaller landscape uh, and opening up their eyes uh, to uh, other opportunities that exist in the market you mentioned industrial properties looking quite ripe for investment so instead of just uh, looking into that apartment that you lease out to students uh, are these other opportunities that uh, investors uh, need to be quite cognizant of yeah I think <coughs> I mean you, you mentioned one about the, the students it comes with its own risks you know people underestimate the uh, the operational you know risks associated with this you've got I was with a person yesterday actually and said you know they've bought three properties uh, and certainly in Cape Town this is quite big is this Airbnb mm. <coughs> which is showing fantastic returns um, the person told me that they in effect are earning three times more than they would on uh, ordinary rental but they've just started it but with that comes its own risks um, as well um, which one must look at but that's certainly been a lot of people as I say especially in Cape Town that are you know putting Airbnb out uh, into the market so <coughs> there are I think what's important is if you know investors have got money one is be very focused on what you're doing you know um, even though you know property appears to be a relatively simple asset class to understand you know it's uh, you know littered with people that have lo lost a lot of money if they're not really sure what they're going to do so you know the you know the, the viewers should speak to property brokers should speak to agents should speak to the banks do a lot of research do a lot of budgeting and working out all the costs and go into this market you know eyes wide open especially you know if one is borrowing money you know in South Africa we all have to sign surety which mm. is you don't have to do anywhere else in the world but you have to sign surety here and you know if things well, God forbid interest rates um, you know go up dramatically you know if for some reason or other 
if South Africa goes through a difficult time over the next few months and our exchange rate goes out, more than likely interest rates are going to increase. And if they will, uh, if they do increase, they will increase dramatically. And you've got to w factor that into account. That can your cash flows, you know, handle uh, increased interest rates? So you have to do a lot of sensitivity analysis on all the properties that you know, all the deals you're looking at. So true. Sensitivity analysis. Gary, we've certainly said quite a bit, but let's get a quick recap now of some of the key takeaway points. Gary, coming back to tonight's conversation, quite wide and very broad and sounds like a simple topic, but has its uh, complexities uh, as you want delves uh, deeper into it. But for those looking for investment opportunities in the property sphere, what are the key considerations they need to bear in mind? Well, I think in summary, I mean, the key considerations is that, you know, you should <coughs> take advantage of these opportunities, but make sure that you, you're liquid. If you want to get into the property market, you have to have enough equity to put in these uh, transactions. That's number one. Number two, you've got to develop expertise in the space. And if you don't necessarily have the expertise, but you want to get into property, then you should partner with somebody, you know, who has got the expertise, certainly to get you off the ground and to see what's a good opportunity and what's not. And also speak to as many people as possible, your, the banks, other lenders, um, property brokers, <coughs> and auction companies, you know, to, to tell you the trends um, in terms of what's happening in property. And I think if you've got a lot of liquidity and you can move very, very quickly on transactions, I think there's a lot of money to be made. Mm. Thank you so much for your time today, Gary, and uh, providing us with a, a fantastic insight into investment opportunities in the property space. That was uh, Greg Palmer, who's from Paragon Lending Solutions, the chief executive officer of that institution. Well, as you heard, you too can uh, certainly provide us with insight and uh, stories into your experience in uh, constantly looking for that reward on your investment, but make sure that you need to be cautious about the risks associated with whatever endeavor it is that you wish to undertake. But tweet us your feedback, thoughts and comments to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Finance410 or to myself at Kukumfupi. Until next time though, we wish you a wonderful evening.